All right, so today we're going to be going over the GSA's Schedule Sales Query tool. Uh, we also call it SSQ. From here on out, I'm going to call it SSQ. So the reason I'm doing this video is because I went through YouTube. There is just an not really any good uh, videos that go deep into SSQ, how to use it, all that stuff. I'm certainly not going to cover everything, but this is what I, the way that I use it um, when I do research about GSA contracts. Um, do this for customers, for anybody that asks, really. So I, I use this tool all the time. And basically what the this SSQ tool is, is all of the sales data that goes into GSA um, is there. And then it allows you to kind of like get, chop it up into certain um, sins or, you know, it, you can look at it from different angles, um, which is really cool. Um, that could be really powerful information to make good uh, business decisions based on the way the market looks past sales. So yeah, let's dive right in. Uh, itinerary is right here. First, I'm going to go over the inter interface and then we're going to go into the data handling. This is kind of the meat and potatoes of this video. And uh, then I'm going to export it and kind of show you how to do that because it exports into uh, a CSV or Excel, which is really cool as well, because you can take the data and then you can start doing some more advanced things based on Microsoft Excel. So uh, jumping right in, let's just go into the interface. Um, here's the website up, up here. I'm going to have this down here, down below in the, the description. Um, when you get here, you have you play around with all these. I go right to the SSQ report builder. Um, up here is a band of all of these different options you can play around with. I'm not going to do that today. And then up here, this is a secret thing, but you can actually hit select include or exclude here, which can be really helpful. Um, that goes for all of these. And it also is in here, you know, any of these dark boxes. Um, I'm going to skip the ones that I don't use them. And I'm going to really focus in on the ones that are helpful. Um, so let's uh, start with the time frame. This is obviously going to be the range for the sales data. So let's say uh, we want to go from 10, 1, 22 uh, to 9, 30, 23. This is going to be one you know, federal fiscal year for 2023. Um, so I'm going to hit enter that. You can see it spins and then the sales data is going to be you know, condensed to only that one year. Uh, you could obviously do multiple years. You could go back, I think, seven or eight years to the mid 2010s for data. Now, uh, let's just that's it for the time frame. Pretty simple. Um, and you enter it manually and then you just click outside of it or you hit enter and then it change. It makes the changes for report options here I'm in a circle. So for report options, we're working in that where we all start, start out with um, a rundown of what this is. So if you see here, there's none, 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 none. All of those relate to all of these nuns. So you can select what you want to see this total sales for last fiscal year uh, kind of chopped up and you can view it based on, you know, you could have it split up by sin. You can have it split up by contractor, by business size. So you have all of these options to view uh, this total uh, by those different variables. And then you have several each place that there's a none it means that you can get even more granular. So for example, you can say, I want it to be uh, selected. I want it, I want the total sales in GSA to be uh, broken up by sin first. And then I want you to break it up next by business size, small or other than small or large. Um, so that could be really helpful. You could even do it backwards. You could say, I want it small business and large business, I want business size here. And then within each one, I want it broken down by sin. And then it kind of just goes from there. So let's dive right in with sin. So in level one, you would just drop this down and click sin. It's see that little blue spin. Now, when you go over here, you can see every sin uh, here's the engineering sin, and you could see 1.4 billion in 2023. Um, and then it, this is all the sins, all of them. If you want to add in and kind of like layer it in to, um, you want to see, okay, I want each sin, but I want to see what them broken down by service or product or business size. You could select that. Um, and now every sin has a, a line 
with uh, small business sales and other than small business sales. So let's go back to engineering. Engineering is about an even split. You could see here GSA is very, uh, you know, work with small businesses very well. Um, small businesses have, uh, you know, it's all over the place, but um, in many sense, small businesses have just as much uh, sales wise, or in some cases, more s sales than large businesses, which is what other than small means. Um, so you could chop this up. Let's say, okay, I want to undo that. Just go back to none. Now I'm going to say, let's go to the next one here. So contractor, you do contractor or UEI. So you have contractor name. These are going to generate the same data, but with the UEI, which I prefer, um, it includes their SAM UEI number which is just good information to have. Uh, sometimes a, a company has sort of a generic name. And if you need to go to Sam to really see the detail, it's the one that's in, uh, you know, located in Philadelphia. That's the right one. You'll, you'll know for sure. Um, so now we can see that e every company on GSA and their sales for that fiscal year. You can see it from highest to lowest. Uh, there, as far as I could tell, there is no way to well, here we go. So now we can click this and I think that's going to switch them around or did, did something. I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, there's the things about the interface that I'm still learning. So, um, that covers, uh, you know, business size. You could also go by socioeconomic category. Let's just take a look at that real fast. Uh, all right. There we go. So the data here is going to be chopped up by the different socioeconomic, um, ones, uh, other than small small business. So we can see those totals there, but then it has veteran owned, small disabled veteran, women owned, all of the other ones broken down here. Yeah, that's good. The only other one I wanted to kind of go to is sometimes it's nice to see the location. So let's just take a look at, you could do state, you could do it by state. that would be a little bit easier. So these are all the states and these are the GSA sales in Virginia for last year. Here's the GSA sales for California. Um, there you go. So you could also go even more granular with that one by going city and state. This is going to have a lot of more records, but that's how it's helpful. Good. So that covers this report options area. We're going to go from the report op op options down to the cross contract identifiers. So what is that? It basically splits the data by variables. Just to keep things simple, let's go back to uh, let's go back to and select business size. No, socioeconomic category. The report options manages the data and puts them into all of the options. It splits it up into all of them so that the total is always going to be the same. Um, it just presents the data in different from different angles. Um, what these cross contract identifiers and then same thing goes with contract identifiers goes is it splits the data and it it doesn't have the total it kind of gives you a zoom lens into one particular area so for example uh for a selected schedule you can say okay i just wanted to go with the mass i always leave this one alone so that's a bad example the ones that i really care about are selected sin contract PSC and contract category. So this can give you some good vision into some things. So selected send, let's say you're not in, you're, you know what sin you're in, or let's say you're not in the GSA, but you want to see what people in the GSA sell in a certain sin. So what we would do is, this is a really weird, um, this is a really weird way that they did this. The, the interface on this is strange. So pay attention right here, or the, otherwise you'll really struggle trying to get this to work. Unselect all and then go to the sin that you want. If you have it, you could type it in by four, one, five, one. Let's do the hacks. All right. And then you could see there's different variations of the hacks, the ST lock, RC recovery. Um, so you can select them all if you want to. I, there aren't usually a lot of sales here. So if I'm just trying to get a good overview of the data, I'll just do select the main one. Um, that keeps things kind of clean. So and then to, to, to finish this off, you click apply. And you could do multiple uh, sins, just so you know. So here are, now it took the data. Now the total is different than before. It's not 43 billion, it's 618 uh, or so million um, in sales. And then you can see it divided up by socioeconomic category. Uh, you can also change, like you could say, okay, well, 
this hacks in, you know, cybersecurity. Let's see who the top contractors are for this sin. And let's scroll up. Okay, so MindPoint, Delaware. Okay, so you can see who the top winners are for that. Now let's say we want to um let's say we want to go by go ahead and go by business size. Let's see what happens here. So business size, this will tell you if they're a small business or not which is good to know, especially if you're going to export this, you might want that data later on. Uh, you can also layer in some more information uh, like uh, state, where they located. There we go. So this is a good list. It's starting to get somewhere. We have the, the information. This is all for uh, cyber. We have the company name, the business size, and what state they're located in. Great. Uh, so that about covers uh, that. You could also, I would, I would, recommend looking into this sometimes the data the using um the psc uh or even these are broader categories they can, can be can be helpful depending on what you're trying to do with this data uh how you're trying to see it uh in the cross contract identifiers you can do selected sin all right oh contract identifiers so on this one you can play around with this as well in other ways i would you know it's worth looking into but I honestly, I don't use this one very often. I really just use report options and cross contract identifiers, and that gets me everything I need. Next up is just the final thing, the exporting data. That's this really teeny tiny button down here with an arrow. So it pops up and you could see we have, you could export it as an image. I don't know why anybody would do that. I don't know why anybody would do any of, the, of these other than CSV, uh, which is Actually, it doesn't, it should say to CSV, but it says data. So it opens up in a new window and you can see the data here. Um, okay, so here's the data. If we scroll all the way over, yeah, it's all there. You can see there's going to be so there are going to be some columns that we're going to want to delete, but you simply click download and it's downloaded as a CSV file right there. And you could close this and you go right back here and do some more uh, research if you want to. Uh, but that is in a nutshell how to use. This SSQ tool, it is a very helpful, very powerful tool uh, to learn about your competitors, to learn about how certain uh, you know buying patterns happen in the GSA. This is the go-to place, and it does get pretty granular. It's, it's actually very, very granular compared to other agencies and how they, how they transparently share their sales data. I hope this is helpful. Uh, drop a comment below if you have any questions. Uh, if you want to know about getting a GSA contract, go to our website, gsafocus.com. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.